Welcome everyone, I am Rama, and I'm here to share with you a really special meditation that I'm gonna invite you to go on a journey with me for the next 40 days, perhaps even the next 120 days, or who knows, maybe you wanna do this for a thousand days. So um, why I'm sharing this meditation with you is because today is Friday, and um, it's November 8th, I think that's the correct date. And yesterday was Thursday, Jupiter went in, it ingressed into its home sign of Sagittarius. And for all of us, we're going to receive a major expansion, a major upgrade in our astrological charts and our lives wherever Jupiter in Sagittarius is going to be transiting. So that is the house of Sagittarius. And um, if you don't know about this and you want to learn more, I do offer astrological divination and we can dive deeper. And so you can always email me at satnam at ramakar.com. And I'll make sure that that email address is in this um, in the text of this video. So what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to introduce you to a special Jupiter med meditation called Gyan Chakra Kriya and we're going to practice it together and um, I'm going to actually make this video into two parts. So this will be the intro and then I'll have a second video where it's just the practice so after you listen to this, and if you do indeed want to practice this, you'll have the practice video um, where it's just us tuning in and doing the Kriya together. And then that way you can use that on your own at home every day if you would like. I am also happy for those of you who want the write-up and the music that goes with this. You can email me as well and um, we'll make sure that you get that into your inbox so that you have that information. So I'm just gonna speak a little bit about why Jupiter and Sagittarius is so significant. And um, here in this technology of Kundalini Yoga, we use Jupiter meditations quite a bit. We do a lot with our Jupiter fingers, which are actually our index fingers. And so Yogi Bhajan taught the, the hands and you'll find this in many schools of teaching and um, wisdom schools that our hands, our, our ears, our feet, our faces, um, are all the tongue in Chinese medicine, they're all reflections of the entire body and not just the physical body, but of our lives, of our personalities. And um, the hands are our connection to the cosmos. And so we have the pinky finger is connected to Mercury. The ring finger is connected to both Sun and Venus. And the middle finger is connected to Saturn. The index finger to Jupiter. And our thumbs are our egos. And through this connection, we are able to connect and radiate out into the cosmos and then draw in that which we need, anchoring it and grounding it into Mother Earth, which that piece of anchoring and grounding into Mother Earth is very important, very essential for these times. And if you practice with me here in Asheville, North Carolina, where I live, you'll hear me speaking quite a lot about grounding, 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 and how important that is, especially since Uranus went into Taurus, which was on May 15th of this year, 2018. So it is essential in these times that every one of us is doing some kind of grounding activity every single day. So why Jupiter in Sagittarius is so important is because Jupiter is a teaching planet, also like the planet Saturn, and where Jupiter shows up in our charts and our lives is all about where we have gifts, where we're able to expand, where we wanna make things really large, um, Jupiter offers many wisdom teachings and also wants us to know that miracles are possible, that we can grow, we can evolve, and that that's part of what we're here to do on the planet. 
So Jupiter moving into Sagittarius is even more significant because it is its home sign. It is where it feels most comfortable. And this energy of Sagittarius with Jupiter is so much around higher wisdom, um, those who are interested in studying or perhaps being in a form of higher education with Jupiter moving into Sagittarius, it's a really good time to activate that. Um, <clears throat> it's a good time to look at your belief systems and to reevaluate them, to go deeper into your phil philosophy. Um, if you are interested in a practice like astrology, um, it is a good time to go deeper into astrology. It's a good time to consider foreign travel, foreign languages, the higher mind. And what I most deeply connect with the Sagittarian energy is also about our highest wisdom, our highest truth, um, that which cannot be destroyed. And so in this technology of Kundalini Yoga, we use the, the mantra Satnam, which Satnam we can literally translate into I am truth. And um, Jupiter in Sagittarius is a very Satnam uh, frequency. It's around what is your truth and do you radiate this? Are you here on the earth living your truth? And if not, how can you get into alignment with that? And honestly, so much of the astrology these days has been about each one of us on the individual level connecting deep in with our own highest truth so that then that ripples out and we begin to change the fabric of the collective consciousness so that we can elevate the consciousness of the earth. Because I think we're all really aware if we don't work together as a team to elevate the consciousness that um, we're gonna be in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> Mother earth is greatly, greatly suffering on certain levels and she really needs us as humanity, as her stewards to show up as stewards to the earth. And that also means being in right relationship with other human beings, which means serving others and bringing the shadows out into the light, creating justice. And um, these, are, these are important times that we live in. So this ingress of Jupiter into Sagittarius comes right on the tails of a very significant new moon, the Scorpio new moon that we had on Wednesday, November, um, sorry, my dates are just off. I think Wednesday was November 7th, which would actually make today November 9th. Um, so on that day, we had a special sacred marriage of lunar Samhain and solar Samhain in this death depth portal. So the Scorpio new moon is a time of year when we're in the Scorpio season where we're working through what the Celts refer to as the solar gate of Samhain. And Samhain is a time of death, of allowing things to lie and stillness to go into the dark before we create new seeds at winter solstice at Yule. And so it's really important as human beings working to capture, to once more claim our connection to the rhythms of the earth, to be able to create spaces in our lives where we let things lie still, where we let things die, where we let things go before we start bringing in new things or going, 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 doing, doing, doing. And so this Scorpio new moon has been asking us like, what is it we're letting go of? What are we shedding? Where does the death need to occur? Where are our shadows? Where are the places that we kind of want to just bypass and go straight to the light? And can we find a space to hold that darkness, to observe it, to witness it, to allow it to be? Because when we give it space and we allow it to be, it actually is seen and heard and there is a space for the healing and then the integration to occur. And as we become more integrated humans, then we can show up for our lineages and for the earth in a whole new way. So 
to get to the heart of this meditation, Gyan Chakra Kriya is a very, very special Kriya. We'll be working with the thumb and index finger together, which are um, the Jupiter finger touching the ego. And what this creates is um, the seal of knowledge. It's a very powerful mudra. We use it a lot in Kundalini Yoga. Gyan Chakra Kriya was taught to be the most sacred of all Kriyas, and it's very powerful. It's um, also very accessible for most of us because the full meditation is only 11 minutes. So I'm going to invite you to begin doing this with me every day for 11 minutes a day. And then, you know, let me know how it goes and perhaps you'll continue on for another 40 days and another 40 days and start to see how this supports your Jupiter and Sagittarius life and in this next year to come. Um, one of the things I want to speak to is that this is a prosperity meditation and um, prosperity is much more than just um, having money in the bank or having a good life. Um, real prosperity, real wealth is health, it is happiness, it is feeling fulfilled in your life knowing your destiny, knowing what you came here to do on the earth, and being able to activate that. To me, that is true prosperity. Um, yes, it's nice when our needs, our physical needs, like warmth, shelter, um, access to clean water, all of the good natural resources, those are also important. And what this meditation will do is it will expand all of these areas. And I also invite you to look at where Jupiter will be transiting your, your Sagittarius house so you can see also what in your life can really get um, expanded during this next year and how you can begin to cultivate that in a conscious way. So um, I wanna share one more thing about this meditation and then I'm gonna set you up for the meditation and then we'll go to the next layer, which is actually practicing together. So one of the things that Yogi Bhajan spoke about with this meditation, and if you're new to Kundalini Yoga, Yogi Bhajan brought Kundalini Yoga from the East, from India, which at that time was actually Pakistan, to the West. And he settled in the United States and um, really felt a call in the late 60s, early 70s to bring this ancient hidden technology to the West. And ultimately his greatest goal was to help women realize their full power, their full potential. Um, he spoke a lot about the woman um, really being very powerful and that the Western woman would change the face of the earth and that woman should go from stature of chick to eagle. And so there's a lot of empowerment, a lot of royalty that comes with being a woman. And this meditation in particular will really help you access that. Now this meditation is for those of all genders and so it, it's open and welcome to all. But I wanted to share a little bit about those teachings because um, in many ways, Yogi Bhajan was a feminist, and that's something that not everyone knows, and I think that it's worth speaking to. So one of the things he said about this meditation is that it really brightens the halo, and it works through the, the aura and the arc line. So the aura is the energetic body around the physical vessel, everyone has one, we all have an arc line, which is a halo from earlobe to earlobe. And it is believed that within the halo, within the arc line, is the destiny. It is written through the halo. And what this meditation does is because we'll be moving the arms like so, you're gonna be actually chanting mantra, moving the arms through the arc line, which is going to allow yourself to imprint a whole new energetic upgrade into the arc line, into the aura, creating great, great expansion. And then if you're doing this in this portal of Jupiter and Sagittarius, 
it's like everything is just getting accentuated and amplified because this is such a supportive time in space to be working with this meditation. As this meditation activates the arc line, it taps into the knowledge from, from the aura and from the akasha. Um, this will get for you all what you need in the planet from your latitude and longitude. So latitude and longitude is the exact coordinates of where you were born, when you were born, your, your birth date, your time, your place, that is your latitude and longitude, which makes the unique cosmology of who you are as a unique individual on the planet. And what this meditation does is it actually gives you the altitude and attitude of prosperity. It gives you height. It gives you this ability to see with that eagle eye a greater expanse of life and where the genius solutions are and then how to apply them and call them forth into your life. So to do this meditation, you're going to bring the thumb and index fingers together and we're going to be sweeping one arm alternately and then the next like so. So the left arm is circling clockwise, the right arm is circling counterclockwise and you alternate one and then the next. Now one thing people do sometimes is because it takes about four or five days of practicing this, practicing this meditation to build up the upper body strength to where it's not challenging. So if you can bear with it for about five days, I guarantee you within six, seven days, you're going to be feeling much stronger. But in the first few days, people kind of slump or the arms go down. And I really invite you to do your best to keep the arms up. Because remember, you want to get through the arc line, you want to get through the aura. And how we practice this meditation is actually a uh, a mirror of how you do everything else in your life. So if you can come to the meditation, if you can really sit with the spine up tall and the chin slightly tucked in and the chest out a little bit, shoulders up, back and down, it's going to assist you to actually create that which you want to call forth into your life. Okay, so the mantra is Satanam Satanam Wahe Guru Wahe Guru. And you can hear it plain. So we'll be singing along with this. And Satanam Satanam. I am truth. I am truth. Wahe Guru Wahe Guru. One who brings me from darkness to light, the ecstasy of this experience. So Wahe Guru, Guru is one who brings you from darkness to light. And this is actually your own highest wisdom. This is your own highest teacher, your higher self. Every one of us here on earth is ultimately on our own unique journeys. And it's through our highest wisdom that we experience this ecstasy of the truth of who we are. So you'll be placing this mantra, this sound code, and as the tip of the tongue hits the roof of the mouth, you're gonna be activating the neurons in your brain and with the hands, you're working with the cosmos, all very powerful. So I'm gonna explain how to tune in and then we're going to begin together. So if, you, if you're totally new to this practice, every time we meditate or we practice yoga together, we chant Om Namo Gurudev Namo, which we can translate into, I bow to the creator, I bow to the divine wisdom within. We're going to chant that three times, opening up this portal and getting on the frequency of our highest wisdom before we go in to meditate. After that, there's a prayer of protection that is chanted, Ad Gude Name, Jugad Gude Name, Sat Gude Name, Siri Gurudev E Name. We will chant that three times. And again, for those of you who are new to the practice and you want to practice at home, you can email me and I'll send you a write up with all of the information so you know how to tune in, you know how to do the meditation, and you'll have the musical track 
or you can follow along on this next video clip. So I'll see you in a moment as we get ready to tune in and practice. Now, one more thing I just want to say <clears throat> is that the ending is very precise with this meditation. So I'll be guiding you through that and um, just make sure you're really with me and listening. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm going to be practicing with you. So for now, I'm just going to leave you with some words of encouragement to really keep the arms up the whole time. And it's only 11 minutes. You totally can do this. You got this. <clears throat> 